Hey guys, Tim here. Today we are going to be ranking every zombie starting room from worst to best. Now this is going to be Treyarch zombies only, of course, and uh, I have a few other things to say. We're keeping up with the times and including zombies chronicles for the starting rooms. So every zombies chronicles map is going to be with a gobble gum machine. And also not every starting room is the spawn room. There is sort of a difference. I will go over that for the individual maps that affects. Oftentimes when people rank starting rooms, they go by the aesthetics and how it feels. Not me though. I'm gonna go for the survivability. So how well can you do in the starting room if you weren't to open up any doors. Oh yeah, and we're not including Verruckt because if you didn't know, there are two different spawn rooms. You have a 50-50 chance of landing in either one, so there's no genuine way to rank it. Because in one of them, you have Jug, and the other one, Quick Revive, and you have a box in one of them. I just don't want to complicate it. But let's saddle up here and get into number 20. The worst starting room in Zombies goes to Barry. Not a bad map, but a terrible starting room. Everybody leaves it pretty much immediately. You have one long, narrow corridor with absolutely no space to roam freely or train. Half of the starting room is on a ledge where you could possibly fall to your death. And there's nothing but an Olympia and an M14. Granted, there is an LSAT, but you would have to leave the starting room in order to get that. So we're not including that. The starting room for Buried is just terrible. And it comes in at number 20. At your number 19 spot, we have Die Rise. You do have a little bit more space than Buried, but you have no quick revive and only the two starting weapons. And almost half of the starting room is just one giant staircase. Aesthetically, it looks pretty bad too. And it comes in at number 19. Number 18, my favorite map, Mob of the Dead. The starting room, however, is nothing extraordinary. It's not bad looking, but again, very little space. You only have the two starting weapons and there's no quick revive on this map. You do get a double points though, which is actually pretty helpful. And you have a little bit more space than Die Rise and Barry. At your number 17 spot, we have Darice and the Giant. They're the same exact starting room, neither of which have quick revive or a gobble gun machine, which is really disappointing. Granted, you do have much more space than the other three that I've talked about, but you still only have the two starting weapons. It's really not an extraordinary starting room, but it's actually not that bad bad despite it being in the bottom four. It's a pretty good atmosphere and there actually is Pack-a-Punch, but again, you would have to leave in order to get that. So you're very limited. At your number 16 spot, we have Nuketown. And I just realized that a lot of these are BO2 maps. Wow. So I'm fairly sure on Nuketown, if you're playing solo, you get quick revive right away in the starting room, which is great. I'm not sure how it works on co-op though. You have the two starting weapons and a lot more space. In fact, the starting room is pretty much a third of the map. And within the starting room, there is a truck that could be open for 3000 points. And then there's Galvin Knuckles, the Bowie knife claim and the AK in there, so I really don't know if you would include that, but there is that. Number 15, Transit, one of the worst looking starting rooms. You do have quicker vibe, but you have very little space and only the two starting weapons. You can build the turbine, but that does you no good if you're not allowed to leave. But hey, at least you can listen to the bus beeping constantly and annoying you. At your number 14 spot, we have five, which is really cool aesthetically. The whole conference table, the clocks, the portraits. It's a really cool vibe. And although you don't have a ton of space, you do have quicker vibe and the M14 in Olympia. One of the very few starting rooms that I'm actually reluctant to leave. Number 13, Call of the Dead. You have a lot of space, but unfortunately most of it is just freezing cold water that'll set you into hypothermia. But you do have Quick Revive and the Olympia and M14 and a giant prick named George Romero who will chase you around. But hey, if you're doing a starting room challenge, it's not gonna matter too much anyway. Plus, if you have enough time in your life, you can actually use the starting weapons and kill George. It takes a lot of time. But by that logic, you can have a Wonderwolf and a Perk. I like the snowy vibe of Call of the Dead, so I don't mind the way it looks, but it is a pretty challenging starting room. Number 12, Shadows of Evil. You do have beast mode, but let's pretend that you can't open up the staircase into Easy Street. You are in a very small and confined area. You have Quick Revive, the RK5, and a Shiva. You do have a random drop, which will either be a double points, insta kill, or max ammo. And if you somehow manage to survive, you're pretty much guaranteed death at round eight. When the Margwa spawns in, there will be a pod that could potentially turn purple, and there's a few you could get a really good weapon, which is why Shadows has made it so far up the list. The starting room is pretty aesthetically pleasing, but it is very, very, very challenging. And you don't have a gobble gun machine. Coming in at number 11, we have Nocturne Toten, which has a decent amount of space. You can definitely train. You do have a gobble gun machine, and with a gobble gun machine comes pretty much endless possibilities. You could upgrade the two wall weapons, you could spawn in power ups, etc. etc. Unfortunately, you don't have quick revive, but you do have mule kick in case you wanted the two wall weapons and and your starting pistol. And you do have that cool little bonus of the nostalgia and the aesthetics of it. The starting room is pretty much half of the map, so you have quite a bit of space to work with. And it comes in at number 11. Number 10, Zetsubo no 
Tsushima, you have a lot of space on this map, especially since you have an entire swimming area. You do have a gobble gun machine, but you don't have quick revive. Of course, you have the RK5 and the Shiva, and you have a plant, which works similarly to the pod on Shadows, except you're not able to fertilize it, so you're not going to get anything spectacular. I don't mind the way it looks too much, you know, it's the jungle, and it cracks our top 10. At number 9, we have its World at War counterpart, Shino Numa. You have a gobble gun machine, and you have quick revive, which is a great combo, trust me. And you have just enough space to be able to train. Just enough. It is not the greatest atmosphere, but you do have good old Peter McCain hanging from the noose. And of course, you have the RK5 and Shiva. Now, Shino Numa, I wouldn't really consider to be a top 10 starting room, but the fact that there is a gobble gun machine in there pretty much automatically puts it up here. Starting rooms without gobble gun machines pretty much can't compete. So that's that, just in case you were confused. At your number eight spot, we have Garad Krovi, a quick revive machine, a gobble gun machine, and the starting guns. What's interesting about this starting room is that you have challenges, which you may or may not be able to complete because you're only limited to a specific area of the map. But you also have to deal with the dragon constantly breathing fire on half of the starting room. There is a decent amount of space, but it's really hard to work with because of the way it's shaped. There's not a good training area, but hey, not a bad starting room. Just above it at number seven, we have Der Eisendrack, which again has quite a bit of space, but not a ton of good training space. Plus that Panzer will come in on round 12 and that is likely going to be your death. With that being said, there's also a tram and you could possibly get a ray gun or any other good weapon from that. There's quick revive, there's a gobble gun machine and the two starting guns. The tram makes a starting room challenge feasible on this map where it otherwise would not be. And so that's why it's at number seven. At your number six spot, we have Origins, another starting room with challenges, which again, may or may not work out in your favor because of the limited space you're in. But regardless, that's still pretty cool. And you also have quick revive upon turning on the generator plus the gobble gun machine. You also have a pretty good amount of training space, at least enough to survive. You also have a pretty good amount of training space. It's definitely possible. And back to the whole uh, challenge thing, you can actually get double tap from one of the challenges, which would make for a very pleasant starting room challenge. And that's why Origins is at number six. Crack in the top five, we have Moon. Now, interestingly enough, you spawn in within area 51, which is not actually the starting room. It's the spawn room, but you actually have to teleport to the space station, which is the starting room, in my opinion. You have quick revive, you have a gobble gun machine, and you have a mystery box. Now, let's think about it for a second. If you have the gobble gun machine, you could grab immolation liquidation and you could spin the box in the starting room, which means you could potentially get the wave gun or pack a punch anything with maybe a crate power. What's also really weird is that there is no starting wall guns in the moon starting room. So if you happen to not have a gobble gums, I guess it's one of the worst starting rooms, but let's assume you do have immolation. You easily could get to around maybe 50. The cosmonaut will spawn in, but you can continue to kill him. And also you can get jug or speed cola before you teleport. So although the anti-gravity is a pain in the ass and moon isn't an ideal map for everybody, this is easily one of the best starting rooms under all of these conditions that I've said. Coming in at number four, we have Shangri-La. Now I'm going to get shit for this, but let's think about it, guys. Quick revive, gobble gun machine, mystery box just like Moon, except you actually have starting wall guns, and it looks a lot better because Shangri-La is the best looking map, but I mean, that's not really gonna count, but it's a bonus. You will be dealing with monkeys quite a bit, and there isn't a good training spot. It's very, very condensed, but if you have a baby maker or a pack-a-punch gun, you shouldn't really have that big of a problem. So pretty much the only reason why Shangri-La is above Moon is because you actually have starting guns. So yeah, Shangri-La made a top five. Coming in at number three, we have the Theater of the Dead. You know, Keynote or Toe In, it is is a really, really well-rounded starting room. First of all, you have a really ideal training spot, tons of space. You know, people typically train there anyway. You have quick revive, you have a gobble gun machine, and you have a mystery box, plus the two starting weapons. There is nothing wrong with the starting room. And I'm pretty sure if you don't turn on the power, you won't get the Nova Crawler. You know, their Toten is better than Shang and Moon because of the amount of space you have to work with. I mean, imagine having the Zeus cannon and a gobble gun like near death experience. I mean, you are indestructible. The second best starting room in zombies goes to Revelations. This is the best training spot on the map. And just like the last few has quick revive, a gobble gun machine, and a mystery box, which leads to all sorts of high rounds. What's also very cool is you have a trap. You know, you have that turret that you can continuously use. Here's a weird complaint. The starting room in Rev is really, really bright. Like it, it almost, it almost, it almost hurts my eyes to look at it, but it's still a really good starting room. Definitely a top five. And of course the number one spot, the best starting room in all of zombies goes to Ascension. And you may be confused, let me explain. You have everything that I talked about. The mystery box, 
quick revive, the two wall guns, the gobble gun machine. You have all of that. And then you have the training space. You have tons of free roaming space. But then the one thing that makes this automatically the best starting room is the giant spinning wheel thing in the center. This thing infinitely goes off and infinitely kills zombies. So theoretically, you could just continue to sit underneath this thing and allow it to kill all of the zombies. So maybe you were surprised by the number one spot, and I know that may be anticlimactic for a lot of you guys out there, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I don't do this enough, but you should go follow me on Twitter for real. The link is in the description, and if for some reason you want to see my Instagram, that's there too. But Twitter is where it's at, bro. I always update you guys when I upload, what's going on if I'm not uploading, pretty much everything. So if you want to be an absolute homie, go down there and follow me. Also, I don't think I swore once in this video. I have to stop that because apparently I'm being restricted for doing it. So I'm having, I'm having to censor myself. Also, I have a Discord. That's right, a Discord. If you don't know what it is, I don't really know much about it either. But go follow me, join my Discord, and you will not only be updated when I upload, but you can communicate and talk to me and other subscribers of mine. But anyways, enough of the talking. I gotta go Peace out.